I'm Jill, that's Jade, this is Plus Points, and why are you dressed like that? You weren't dressed like that last week. We're talking about the law. Yeah, okay, look. look I I'm pretty sure there's nothing in here that says, thou shalt dress like a time-traveling SKP from Woodstock. You have been reading that weird Christian modesty book that I found in the jumble sale, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Jade, I keep telling you, it's about as biblical as a thetan riding a unicorn. Um... <sighs> Look, do you want to do the introduction, you know, before the TARDIS comes back for you? The TARDIS is coming. <sighs> nah. Of course it's not. So, picture the scene. You are the Jewish nation, the people of Israel. Your exodus from Egypt has happened, you're in the desert, and now you're kind of lost. And everything was going okay when Joseph and his brothers moved into Egypt about 400 years previously, but somewhere in there things have gone a bit... wrong. You've been a slave nation for the past couple of hundred years, but God has led you out of slavery and promised to fulfil the covenant he made to you. And how is he going to manage that? We need... The law. <sighs> just, just get the clipboard, please. This, this could get a little complex. In the book of Exodus, several thousand years ago, not far from Mount Sinai, we find the newly freed Jewish nation. Then Moses went up to God and the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. Shortly thereafter follow the Ten Commandments with a whole raft of other laws close behind. The key point for this episode is that the law is a gift from God to make his people into a just, fair, decent bunch who worship him. It's not just restriction for the sake of it. These people have been slaves for a very long time, but now they need to learn to be a community of free people and generally act in a holy fashion. And the law has different meaning in different contexts. One, any of the 613 commands to the Israelites. Two, those commandments as a whole. Three, referring to Genesis, to Deuteronomy, the book of the law. Four, referring to just Deuteronomy as the book of the law. Five, in the New Testament, to refer to the entirety of the Old Testament religious system. And six, in the New Testament, to refer to the collected set of rabbinic commandments and interpretations of the written law, which formed the oral law. Incidentally, keeping track of all of the bits relating to the oral law was the job of the Sanhedrin. After the Romans outlawed them in the first century CE, the Sanhedrin only actually made one more commandment, uh, which was in the 11th century, outlawing polygamy. Aww. The laws are a part of God's covenant with the Hebrews. And what's a covenant? Well, it's like a legal contract, and it has a standard form. The preamble identifies the parties involved. The prologue tells you briefly their dealings with each other up to this point. The stipulations are what has to be done, i.e. the laws. The witnesses are who is watching, God himself and indeed all creation. The sanctions are what happens if the covenant is not kept. And a document clause stresses the need for regular review. Though in this case, instead of change, review means reminder. So the laws contain one, covenant requirements. Keep the commandments and receive the blessing and the protection of God. Don't, meh, not so much. Remember this, it'll be important next time. It also contains two, ritual laws concerning things like temple worship, sacrifices, dietary laws. Three, civil laws concerning crimes and their punishments. And four, moral laws. Don't murder, care for the needy, that kind of thing. And here is where it gets interesting, because unless you are both Jewish and in possession of a time machine, you cannot and do not really need to keep to the letter of all of the commandments. Like, you can't really make the necessary sacrifices in the temple because, well, no one has been in the temple since 70 CE when it kind of got a little bit destroyed by the Romans during the siege of Jerusalem. That was not a particularly good day for anybody. Wait, so does that mean I don't... Almost all of the laws of the Old Testament do not, in fact, apply to Christians today. Not shellfish or mixed fibres or stoning your children for disobedience or anything. The things that do apply need to either A, be in the New Testament, B, come under the heading of love God and love thy neighbour, or C, the Ten Commandments. 
So can I just go? But C, and... C is just B in disguise, isn't it? Yeah, sure. I'm gonna go get. But the Old Testament laws—they tell us, even if they're not applicable to us, about the character of God. They tell us that God cares for the poor and that God cares for the needy, and they're much more equitable than, say, some of their contemporaries, like the laws of Hammurabi, where you were perfectly all right if you were a rich dude. Under Jewish law, if you murder someone's daughter, you get executed. If you murder someone's daughter under the laws of Hammurabi and you're a rich guy, then they will kill one of your daughters. Because fairness. They tell us that God wants people who put him first. So no, it's probably not the most helpful section of the Bible to be reading as a modern Christian looking for applicability. But they do tell the story of how a bunch of wandering nomads became a nation. But what happens when it all doesn't go according to plan? Do they need a hero? Nope. They need a prophet. And you know what I need? A fashion intervention? Maybe just a change of clothes. Back soon. Jade? Can you hear that? <laughs>